Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for some more Star Wars Battlefront 2 news and today we have a quite a lot of ground to cover as the community manager Ben Walk has been very active the past day with new information which is a relief to see because this month has been pretty rough to say the least when it comes to communication and the past few community transmissions other than the one for the newest update that came out yesterday or the day before have been really weak as far as details go they've just been I don't even know why they call them community transmissions because a couple of those were just like a paragraph with like no information which those were very very disappointing but it is really great to see the devs starting to ramp up communication again as we get closer and closer to the month of June which Ben in particular has been hyping up as an amazing month for Battlefront fans and I certainly hope so because I would love to see things pick up steam again and know what kind of content we are getting anyways let's just jump right into the news which includes a lot of details on some pretty massive changes that dice is planning on adding to HVV as soon as possible and a lot of other bits and pieces of news. First things first, if any of you have noticed that some of your characters are at a ridiculously high level after yesterday's patch went live, you are not alone. This has been affecting a lot of people. My Lando somehow jumped from level 40 to level 655 after yesterday's patch went live without me using him whatsoever, and a lot of other players have been having similar experiences. Ben did clarify that this was not intentional at all, and that the team is looking into this, and I'm not sure if they plan on taking the levels away from people who have had this bug, or whatever this is supposed to be. Part of me wonders if the newest update accidentally gave the full XP history to people for random characters by accident. Maybe the game has been tracking the entire time just how much XP has been earned with each character, but I don't personally think that's the case because I have a hard time believing I would be anywhere near a level 655 with Lando. I have played him quite a bit, but maybe with someone like Ray or Vader who I've used a ton I could be that high, but with Lando I think I'd be around like level 200 or something, not even close to 600. So chances are it's just a weird glitch, and if you were affected by this, you'll probably lose your high level character in the future, even though that is a bit unfortunate, because I would like to keep mine. Next up, if any of you have been hoping Capital Supremacy will expand past just the Clone Wars era, it looks like you might be in luck. Just a couple of months ago, Ben did say that DICE has no plans to add original trilogy or sequel trilogy maps to Capital Supremacy, but something must have changed because just a few hours ago, he replied to a post over on the Battlefront forums saying that the dev team is now aware that there is a huge desire for the mode to expand to other eras. I have a feeling when DICE was creating the game mode in the first place way back in like the summer, they probably just thought that everybody was ready for more Clone Wars content and that was all people were going to want, but now that we've had nothing but Clone Wars for like 6 months straight, I think it's safe to say that a lot of the community would really love some content for the original trilogy, and I'm sure there are some that want more for the sequel trilogy as well, although I would personally prefer some OT content first. Next up, we have a lot of details on what DICE is changing in the near future for Heroes vs. Villains, as well as a couple of things that they've already changed this morning, so those are live right now, you can jump on and try these first few things out. Earlier today, a patch went live on all platforms that doubled the elimination requirement from 25 to 50, and also decreased the respawn timer down to 6 seconds, which is a very welcome change because I just hate sitting at the spawn screen if I die. As far as the new elimination count goes, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I will say that 50 is going to lead to some very long matches. I have a feeling they'll tweak it more in the future, I think 40 would be a little bit more appropriate, but I will have to just check it out for myself to see. Ben also replied to a huge list of awesome suggestions for HVV, and surprisingly the team is already working on a couple of these. The suggestions were to remove the 24-7 enemy radar entirely, which I am totally on board with, stop the auto spawning in for AFK players and reduce the kick time for those players from 4 to 2 minutes, which is again a great suggestion, and find a way to fill lobbies faster when players rage quit, which has always been a problem. The matchmaking is just so slow that most of the time if anyone leaves the game it just never fills their spot until the next match, which is so annoying. And finally they did suggest to improve the spawn points because in the new HVV, if your team does get split up even once, it's usually a slaughter for the rest of the match. 
Ben replied to all of these suggestions, saying that the team is already working on removing the precision radar, they are looking into all of the AFK problems, and that they do have a plan for a squad system for HVV to help with teams getting split up and just getting absolutely massacred. Honestly, I could see a squad system becoming an absolute mess for heroes versus villains. If they have it set up in a way where you can't spawn on a teammate who is in combat, well then you'll just never be able to get on a teammate fast to help save them, which is the biggest issue with getting split up, is one teammate is just stuck with a horde of enemies, and you can't get there in time, and then by the time you get there, they're dead, and it just rinse and repeat, which that would just make the squad system completely pointless if you just couldn't spawn on a teammate, but if you can spawn on your teammates at any time, even when they are in combat, that is also going to be a complete mess, and screw up pretty much any 1v1 or close fight with a hero just spawning out of nowhere, and ability spamming as they spawn, which would not be fair. Either way, I'm just very interested in seeing how exactly they plan on an HVV squad system, as if they kind of just throw it together and throw it in the mode like they did with the new HVV in general, it is just not going to work out very well in my opinion, but it probably could work if they really put some thought into fitting it in and making it a strategic play other than just you hit spawn, you're right on the enemy, you ability spam and wipe out their team, which would just be equally frustrating as just getting separated in the first place. Overall though, I am glad that DICE is planning on making some big changes, but I'll just never understand why that dev team just put stuff out knowing they'll have to completely fix it later, it's always been baffling how they do things that way. Next up, if you were still holding on to some hope that DICE may make the new version of HVV a separate game mode, and then have the target system version as a different option, Ben did say that they have no plans for this, and honestly, that's fine. I would love to have options just because more game modes is a good thing, especially now that the player base is very healthy, but as long as DICE is planning on working on the new HVV, it is fine by me. Last Heroes vs Villains news, a lot of people have been asking Ben if DICE would consider changing HVV to a 6v6 mode, and he did reply saying that while they wouldn't make that a permanent thing, the dev team might do that as a weekend event in the future, which in my opinion would be a super fun event that I would love to see, maybe even 8v8 which would be insane. And finally, if you do use the ARC Trooper at all, you've probably noticed that one of the pistols shoots really fast and consistently, while the other just kinda shoots when it wants to in a very slow and erratic way. Well, yesterday's patch was supposed to fix that problem, it was in the patch notes and everything, but instead DICE just managed to switch which pistol didn't work. Before it was the left one that shot way faster than the right, and now it's the right one that shoots super fast. I have no idea how DICE manages to do things like this, it's kind of hilarious, but the other community manager Jay did chime in and say the team is aware, so hopefully they're able to fix that soon, because I did see a few of you commenting on that on yesterday's video. Well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to drop a like, and if you are new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, as we would be honored if you would join us. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.